This exercise might seem familiar and that's because we used this very same topology in our standard ACLs exercise and we also have the very same tasks but this time instead of configuring standard access lists we'll be configuring extended access lists. Let's start from task one. Task one says ban PC1 from accessing the internet router. Previously, when we had to only use standard access lists, we configured an access list on the internet router on this interface right here. This time, since we are able to specify both the source and the destination, we can apply this access list closer to the source. Let's do that and I will explain this as we go. Enable password is quince, as mentioned here. Configure terminal, and then we can start creating our list. The only difference here is that we will use this keyword extended instead of word standard, and we will give a number higher than 100 for our list because that's the range used for extended access lists. Now we want to specify from where to where we are denying the communication. We want to say deny and it doesn't specify here which protocol we want to ban. So we're going to assume they want us to ban everything. So the entire communication, we don't want them to communicate at all. In that case, we should use IP and then say host and then list the source. The source in this case is PC1. Address of PC1 is 10.0.0.5. And then we need to list IP address of router internet. And router internet's IP here is 173.22.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
source IP is 10.0.0.5 and destination IP is 10.0.0.1. We don't have an access list for that, so we're all good. When we try to ping from PC1 to router internet, now we have a failed ping. Let's check if ping has failed due to the access list or something else, right? So mm -hmm. we want to open this packet. And yes, the packet matches the criteria, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Next task is to ban all communication between networks 12.0.0.0 and 14.0.0.0 in both directions. All right, this will obviously be configured on router one, but this time I'm going to create only one access list instead of two. So let's start with that. We're gonna say IP access list extended 102 and then deny 12000 wildcard for slash 24 and then 14000 and then 000255. Ah, yes, I forgot to mention the protocol we want to block. So we want to block all communication. This time, this task is specific. So it says ban all communication. And then I want to deny this communication in the other direction so from 14 to 12. We must not forget to add that permit rule and as already explained it's going to be permit IP any any. Now let's apply this access list. First I'm going to apply it to fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 so let's open that interface. And I'm going to say IP access group 102 in. What I want this list to do on this interface and on this direction is I want it to recognize packets going from network 12 to 14 and then drop those packets. Obviously, none of the packets coming from this network are going to match this rule. So this rule is relevant in our other interface or on our other interface. Okay, interface fast ethernet one slash one. That's the interface where network 14000 is connected. So we're going to pretty much use the same command IP access group 102 in. And let's see what happens when we try to ping between these two networks. We have a failed ping. Let's make sure that these PCs can communicate to other networks, the ones that are not denied. Yep, all good. Now on to our third task, which is kind of interesting, not because of the command. The command is going to be deny TCP source, destination, and then equal telnet. Okay, that's what I showed in the explanation video. But where are we going to apply that access list? This is for PC2, this is PC2. PC2 connects to router one through fast ethernet zero slash one. Okay, it does use that telnet line, virtual teletype line, one of those 16 lines that we mentioned in our standard access lists exercise but that traffic goes through this interface. So we would actually be applying that access list on this interface, but we already have an access list there. We have this ACL 102. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to insert a rule in, in between this rule and this rule. There is a way, whoops, no. Okay, there is a way to do that. We're going to open router one and we're going to say do show, oh, I can't use tab because I'm in the global configuration mode. 
and it shows all of our access lists, all two of them, <laughs> and then it shows the rules with these numbers right here. So the way you insert a rule is you use a number that is between the rule, the first rule you, okay, so I want to insert a rule somewhere in between 20 and 30. So I need to use a number between 20 and 30. Okay, hope you got that now. All right, so what I want to do is I want to open this access list 102. I need to get into this uh, extended access list configuration mode. And I'm going to do that by typing in IP access list extended 102. So I'm reopening that access list. Okay, I'm not creating a new one because an access list with the number of 102 already exists. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to type in 25. You can type in any number between 20 and 30 in order to insert that rule successfully. So I'm going to say 25, deny TCP, because Telnet uses TCP. And then I need to list the source IP. I'm blocking 12, 005 from accessing 12001. Now, this PC is actually going to be able to access router one through any of its other IP addresses, but that is a different topic right now. We are, we just want to do this as an example, right? So source destination and then specific TCP protocol that we want to block. And I'm going to say Telnet and that's it. And then I'm going to exit the access list. I'm going to issue this do show access list command again to make sure that my newly inserted rule is here. Also, by using this command, you can see how many matches matches this uh, access list had. Okay, now let's try to tell it. Actually, I'm going to try to tell it from PC3 just to check if it's working at all. I'm going to say tell it 12001 and it's working. I'm going to say quince. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I wanted. Uh, by the way, to get out of this loop, you press at the same time left uh, control key on your keyboard, shift, and number six. All right, what I wanted to do is I wanted to type in enable and then quince. And now I'm in the router, show run, and I can look at all the configuration. While we're, we're here, we can see that we can't see those numbers, right? So we can't see that 10, 20, 25, uh, 30 here. We can only see the basic commands and the number of the access list. Okay, so Telnet is working from PC3. Let's try from PC2. No, wrong one, common prompt. Telnet 10, no 10, 12, zero, zero, 001. And connection timed out, remote host, host not responding. Let me see if I can see that in the simulation mode. I'm going to repeat the telnet command, and then we're going to see a TCP packet go off to router one, and then the packet matches the criteria, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's it. I hope you found that useful. We will be using access lists further in this course. So that's why I didn't want to overdo it in these lessons because we will have the opportunity to repeat all of this later. Okay, see you in the next lesson.